Good morning. I'm Hassan Giordano, and this is your DMV Daily Dose for Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. It's currently cloudy and 45 degrees in Baltimore. Expect rain starting in the morning, then cloudy skies in the afternoon. Temperatures will be fairly consistent, averaging about 47 degrees. The Baltimore Sun's Luke Broadwater is reporting on a Goucher poll that shows United States Senator Bernie Sanders leading the Maryland Democratic primary race for president. In a survey conducted February 13th through the 19th, 24% of respondents said that they plan to vote for Sanders in the state's upcoming April 28th primary. Former Vice President Joe Biden was in second place with 18% support, followed by billionaire Michael Bloomberg with 16%. About 7% of respondents said they plan to vote for former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg, while U.S. Senators Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota and Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts each had 6% support. Sanders, an independent senator from Vermont, is leading an average of national polls by double digits. The Goucher poll asked about head-to-head matchups between individual Democrats and Republican President Donald Trump. In the deep blue state of Maryland, the poll found every Democrat in the field leading Trump by wide margins. But Sanders led Trump by the biggest of margins, 61% to 34%, according to the poll. Just 31% of Marylanders approve of the job that Trump is doing as president, while 62% disapprove the poll found. Those numbers are better, however, than the approval of Congress, because only 13% of residents approve of the job that Congress is doing, compared with 79% who disapprove. Now, the Baltimore Brew is reporting on another poll that shows former Baltimore Mayor Sheila Dixon leading the pack of mayoral candidates leading up to the April 28th primary election. A new February 2020 poll conducted by Global Strategy Group shows that Dixon's main challenger is City Council President Brandon Scott, who was within striking distance of her lead, according to this poll. It was attained by the Baltimore Brew and was commissioned by the Scott campaign. In a seven-way primary contest, 20% of likely Democratic Party voters said that they would vote for the former mayor, Sheila Dixon. Following her was Scott at 16%, T.J. Smith at 13%, Mayor Bernard C. Jack Young at 11%, Thiru Vignaraja at 11%, State Senator Mary Washington at 9%, and Businesswoman Mary Miller at 2%. The latest poll indicates that support for Dixon has advanced more than any other candidate, while Vignaraja's has dropped sharply. T.J. Smith has gained some traction while Mayor Young has stumbled and Council President Scott has stayed relatively stable. The core of Dixon's base is black women, which represents 45 percent of the Democratic electorate in Baltimore, according to the poll. The 66-year-old former mayor argues that her experience makes her the best candidate to steer Baltimore through a sustained wave of street violence and instability at City Hall. In a recent Fox 45 town hall, Dixon pointed to the facts that she spent less on police and significantly less on police overtime, more than any other mayor in recent history, or less than any other mayor in recent history, and yet was still able to reduce crime and homicides across the board to lows not seen in over 30 years. She also pointed to the one constant that has been evident throughout the past five years of bloody murder here on the streets of Baltimore including increasingly violent crime and 300-plus homicides each year. Those consistents are that Jack Young, the entire time, was city council president, while Councilman Brandon Scott was the councilman in charge of the Public Safety Committee charged with reducing crime, which never happened under his watch. Now, speaking of Baltimore mayors, the Baltimore Sun's Justin Fenton is reporting on more people filing support letters for former disgraced mayor Catherine Pugh ahead of our sentencing hearing later this week on Thursday. Former Baltimore mayor Kurt Schmoke, megachurch pastor Jamal Harrison Bryant, and the longtime publisher of the Afro-American newspaper J.K. Oliver are among the latest to file letters of support for former mayor Catherine Pugh ahead of her sentencing in the federal fraud case on Thursday.
The second wave of letters comes from 24 people and add to the nearly 50 letters already submitted to the U.S. District Court Judge Deborah Chasinau by Pew's defense attorneys earlier this month. The first round of support letters included Kwaizi and Fume, who won the Democratic special primary in the race to replace the late Congressman Elijah Cummins, and Dr. David Wilson, president of Morgan State University. Now, Pew, who's 69, is set to be sentenced later this week, and prosecutors have asked for nearly five years behind bars for the former de Democratic mayor, who pleaded guilty in November to conspiracy and tax evasion charges related to the scandal involving the sale of her Healthy Holly Children's books to the University of Maryland medical system and other entities doing business with the city. Pew's defense attorneys, on the other hand, are asking that she serve one year and one day in prison. Now, the Sun's Talia Richmond, Richmond is reporting on a charter amendment that the Baltimore City Council will consider. Yet another proposal to reshape the power structure in local government. Third District Councilman Ryan Dorsey introduced a charter amendment during Monday night's meeting that would alter the composition of the council. It would eliminate the at-large council president position and add a 15th district representative instead. Now, the council president would then be chosen by the council members, similarly to how the Maryland General Assembly and other county councils select their leadership. This bill comes two weeks after Councilman Bill Henry from the 4th District introduced a different charter amendment that would shrink the council to nine members from the current 14-member structure. Six from individual districts and three elected at large, from which the council would choose its own council president. The structure of Baltimore City's council has last changed substantially back in 2002, when it moved from six three-member districts to the current 14 single-member districts under Question P, which was pushed by the since-shuttered ACORN Housing Advocacy Organization. Now, the council president continued to be elected by voters across the city, and that changed back in 2002. These bills recently introduced are a part of a wider attempt by some city council members who want, they say, to institute more checks and balances in local government, specifically by chipping away at Baltimore's strong mayoral system. Now, Dorsey's proposal also would shift power away from the council president, a position he said comes with no accountability to the rest of the members. Dorsey's proposal also would change the way a mayoral vacancy is filled. Right now, the council president automatically steps up, which is how Mayor Bernard C. Jack Young got the job after Catherine Pugh's resignation. Now, under Dorsey's bill, however, council members would vote instead on who from the council should ascend to the mayor's position. Quote, I'm not too sure that when we're electing a council president that we're also saying that this person would be the next best mayor, Dorsey says. Now, these proposals could join a slew of government reform measures on the ballot next later this year in the November election for voters to consider. City Council President Brandon Scott recently introduced legislation calling for the Board of Estimates, which approves all city purchases, contracts, and settlements worth more than $25,000 to be reconfigured. Now, the powerful five-member board is made up of the mayor, the council president, and the comptroller, three citywide elected positions, and two mayoral hires, the city solicitor and the public works director. Now, the latter two traditionally vote in line with their boss, of course. Scott's proposal would cut the mayoral appointees from the board, weakening the mayor's control over city spending. Now, it's ironic that Scott is introducing the legislation since as councilman over the past eight years, he has voted not once, but twice against this very exact bill and measure as this bill was something that I personally have tried getting passed for the past decade. I'd also like to thank all those who showed up and showed out yesterday at the Voice and DMV Daily News sponsored Stop Fox protest and press conference, calling attention to the daily violations of the FCC Communications Act provisions prohibiting a media outlet to continuously allow a candidate for office to receive airtime without offering that same time to other candidates for the position. Now, the station stated live on their morning show yesterday that while their chosen candidate, Thiru Vignaraja, who made yet another appearance yesterday morning, 
took advantage of their invitation that they had, in fact, invited every mayoral candidate to have a once a month appearance on their station. However, after doing our due diligence, we contacted almost every single mayoral candidate and not one stated that they ever received such an invitation. Now, the group was yesterday was counseled by attorneys at yesterday's protest as several law enforcement officers that were hired by Fox looked on and even harassed the protesters at, at one point. And it appears that a joint lawsuit will be filed against Fox and the Sinclair Broadcasting Group that owns Fox. On, and it's likely to be on the horizon in the coming days, pointing to the multiple violations of this federally mandated equal time law. Well, I'm your man, Mr. Politics, and this has been your DMV Daily Dose for Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. For more information on the articles that I mentioned, just go on over to the website at www.dmvdaily.news.